this is clearly in the realm of speculation. Uh, we probably right now don't want to go too deeply into uh, the metaphysics of the mind-body problem or anything like this. Um, but I think there is a, probably a useful distinction to be made between pain in the sense of rudimentary aversive experience and outright suffering. Uh, and though it is possible, quite possible, I believe that single-celled organisms are capable of very rudimentary aversive experience. It seems extremely implausible to say that single-celled organisms suffers in the full sense. Uh, and therefore, uh, we sh should probably be skeptical about the existence of full-blown suffering before the Cambrian explosion, or whenever we date the, the origins of multicellular life. I mean, it may well be deep, deep, deep in our evolutionary past, the actual origins of aversive experience. But suffering, okay, it's, it's conventional, but it, it's not wholly arbitrary. Uh, and even today, uh, though it's invidious to draw these distinctions, we need to have some kind of prioritization when it comes to suffering. What are the most morally urgent challenges we need to tackle? Uh, and though perhaps one can have a, a sketch of a, of a utopian uh, civilization in which there is literally no suffering, initially we need to focus on vertebrates, probably the higher vertebrates, uh, that a central nervous system is almost certainly a precondition for having a unitary subject of experience as distinct from individual uh, uh, nerve ganglia. So that's not a complete uh, uh, explanation, but that's a, a sketch of an explanation. Um, whereas in the case of reward and pleasure, we have two ultimate hedonic hotspots. In the case of uh, pain, suffering and distress, it is much more anatomically diffuse. So uh, yes, I mean, it's possible by means of electrode studies to explore a particular role of different areas uh, of the brain. So um, yes, it's not a, mat a matter of simply zapping a single pain center or something like that and then the rest of our lives enjoying gradients of bliss. Um, but yes, if you look at each of our core emotions, uh, disgust, uh, anger, fear, anxiety, panic, they do have their own identifiable uh, molecular anatomical substrates. They are extremely, in the case of our core emotions, uh, extremely strongly conserved uh, over time. Uh, and therefore it seems a very fair bet uh, that in both humans and, uh, and, and, and vertebrates, certainly, that uh, uh, pain, fear, anxiety are phenomenologically extremely similar. Um, yes, of course, we do uh, uh, differ from, let's say, a, uh, a pig in that only humans can be, uh, for example, uh, uh, worried that next year the rate of inflation is going to be high or worried about, I mean, yeah, th this, this is it. It's our, our generative syntax enables us to be happy and sad about innumerable more uh, different things than were possible uh, for non-human animals without capacity for generative syntax. But the same core uh, emotions, uh, uh, core states, fear, anxiety, happiness, surprise, disgust, anger, uh, seem to be uh, quite, uh, uh, quite widespread. Um, evolutionary ancient, yes. Let's focus on uh, the opioid system. Uh, now it's true that uh, in the case of uh, a depression, uh, many of the attempted treatments of depression and low mood today aren't targeting the opioid system, but this is probably one reason why in many cases they aren't especially effective uh, and many people do not achieve uh, adequate uh, remission uh, or even response to antidepressants. Um, as social primates, uh, why is it that we uh, spend much of our time socially interacting? Why is it that 
uh, uh, solitary isolation is often reckoned one of the worst tortures for a social primate. Uh, the explanation seems to be uh, to do with uh, endogenous opioids and the release of endogenous opioids. Um, and therefore the challenge is to ensure that uh, we are happy without compromising uh, our responsibilities as social primates and of course our responsibilities uh, to our future children. Um, a lot of these interventions one needs to think well what will be not just the effects on the individual but on society as a whole uh, and the nature of, of, of selection pressure.